right, in this video I'm going to try to take on another obfuscated JavaScript file attached to an email. Uh, this one should be uh, fairly simple compared to some of the others so far. So this one has multiple copies of the same file. Uh, examining each of these files will show that they're all identical. That's a common procedure found in a lot of attachments these days, I'm noticing. Or that is, other than to possibly pad the file size and make the files look bigger or smaller. Okay, so the first thing I notice here, this file has an awful lot of commented out code. Fortunately, it's all the letter C. And since I don't want to scan through and find out if code is chopped into one line here and one line there, I'm just going to start replacing my way out of it. Be on the safe side, I'm going to copy absolutely everything. That way, if there was any extra space in there, it will take care of it. And I've also left the setting on to automatically decode the uh, escaped character. So this is now the code left over, 108 lines. Let's make sure we get that all. Now, a quick look at this code. <clears throat> Pretty easy, injected the same comment into everything, so let's just wipe that out. Cleans that up. First thing I'm going to do here is remove this conditional coding commented out area because the idea would be that I would be wanting to see what this does on a Windows system, and that's what the conditional coding is blocking. And so now I see more variables in here that need to be processed and tested. And yeah, this is rather lame obfuscation because the majority of it is simply strings that are broken up. I'm going to jump ahead here in the video uh, to after I go through and process all of these strings, just concatenating all of the parts that can be put together. Okay, so that was fairly simple. Um, there were an awful lot of strings in there that just simply had to have all the plus signs removed to shrink them right down. Now there's going to still be a bunch of strings that need to be processed uh, based on this kind of concept. With the brackets, we only use the last character in each. So this reduces to just the word run. For the YDO, we reverse it. And then that becomes ODY and add it back to here. For this, we reverse this. I'm going to go through and start replacing all of these constant parts of text where I can find them. And uh, once I've replaced them, I will remove the original variable as well. Okay, so that took a couple of minutes to go through, um, clean most of them out. I think I've got them all. It, uh, a lot of them were strings being assigned to a string from before and then used again. So that got rid of a lot of them, including there's one more. Um, so, yeah, just first of all here, a quick reduction of space. A lot of repeated code in some of those spots. And just for my own consistency, I'm going to change the coding structure. Keeps them all clean, even though they're just single line ones. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna start from the top here and just try doing some substitutions. I see a lot of these number ones need to be substituted, so let's buzz through those. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 0 is 2. 2 times, this is 1, so, and this is 2, minus 2. So this becomes, and I bet that's not used anywhere. 
Does this get reassigned anywhere? Nope, so we have a constant. This right here, uh, a function that simply returns string. By to that code. If true, well, if true will always be true, so this if One, two, four. Mm, anything else stand out here as removable? Okay, maybe not. So maybe we'll just go ahead and start doing some of the replacements at this point. Yeah, let's start replacing some of these objects figure out the coding well this we know is a internet connection request object and what's united a window script shell object and that is what dumbo one is returning here so this is a system shell object now we can tell here instruction to expand the temporary variable from the environment so this will effectively generate a string and we add a bizarre exe file name to that so this is going to be a that's a file name um, same with these these are basically file names so we'll call this one And we'll call the other one here, uh, the bat file name. Those are string replacements. Okay, so United here is a W script object that will be created. Windows script object. Okay, those got accidentally changed as part of that uh, but they are a local variable name clearly this function here is simply telling the computer to open a system shell and run a file probably with no visible window and not report on any errors when it's done so we can change this function name here to run the file and we will replace that parameter name with file run. Okay. What else can we replace through here with our known objects? Or can I test something? What about this function problem? It's not used at all, so we don't need that. Okay. So, what's the other weird names we've got here. Again, this is using a, it's reusing a variable name here that caused this effect. But for local, it's be used for something else. That's another trick I've seen in a few of these files recently is they've been using the same variable name for different types of objects. You know, initially assigning it to a string in one place and then changing it to something else later. Uh, that way, uh, global replace on it would wind up very messy if you're not careful. Not very sure at the moment what that would be. Okay, well this is a string I can just replace here. This is a batch file command strings. What's page one? Adobe stream. Okay, so we can replace these here. This is a data streaming object. Now these get used interchangeably we have two variables identify the same streaming object so i'm just going to simplify this by changing run the file to that as well now we don't have to worry about that redundant variable but it is interesting that it is creating three the object three times it doesn't have to because it can simply reuse it but we'll just keep them in because they provide nice separations 
So now we know that this is a data streamer object that's being passed in to here, you know, to this function. Now that makes sense. Save it as a file name. Is the exe file name even used? Yes, it's written here. Okay. So this is a bit redundant as this is because uh, it solves what the exe file name is going to be and writes that out in a string. But we also have a command recalculating that entire file name as a, a second time. Let's change this here to save data stream. And now we should have enough to go on. I'm Pretty sure that I can figure out what this is doing from here. So, interpretation time. I would like to know still the details of this kind of mechanism with the double brackets and um, on how this creates the object and how this refers to the object. I think that this is code that upon loading it becomes evaluated before the rest of the JavaScript gets executed, which would then generate a function that these things can refer to. But uh, yes, so what we do here is the system will, these are just functions. Okay, we don't need to worry about this bracket. We can move this code over. And so first of all, this do while means that we're gonna track it with some variable called bounce game. It's a fun enough variable name to keep the way it is right at the moment. Um, so if bounce game is true, which it initially, well, initially it will do the loop no matter what the value is. Uh, then we have a try and a catch probably around here. And of course the catch is doing absolutely nothing in it. So they're not even worrying about it. Just simply the try. Try is probably necessary to wrap around all these objects. Uh, it would make the request, send the request in, and then sleep for 120 milliseconds, giving the system enough time to respond. As long as the ready state was less than four, ready state of four means that the document has finished downloading and everything is good. So while it's still trying to download, this would just continue, meaning jump to outside of the four and keep on doing this loop until we have downloaded the document. Once the document is downloaded, it could continue carrying out this code or it would resume carrying out this code. Don't want to use the word continue, and continue actually meant continue the loop. Um, we're going to generate a file name, to a file name for a batch file and an exe file, both stored in the temporary folder. Make a data streaming object, open it. Type 2 is writing text data, uh, I believe. Um, this character set, is probably something that didn't have to be specified. This would mean to use like English characters as opposed to Cyrillic alphabet or something like that. Um, and then we write out the text, which was the, the start plus the bat file plus the line breaks and the word exit. And then we close that and then we create another object that opens the stream, writes the letter M, and then saves the data stream as it is. So we've basically just written the letter M. Now why would that be? It writes the first letter M as the file, and then we save this data stream, the letter M, to our exe file. Then it opens up the connection to the website uh, request, and grabs the rest of the text from there and writes that out starting at position one in the exe file. So my guess is that based on the fact that the letter that the, the bytes M and X are the magic bytes for an executable file, they might have had this program write the first character, the M, and allow the rest of the data just to simply start with X so that there was no executable file found on the uh, on the server end. It would have just been a data stream that started with the letter X. So how does that end up getting reset? Uh, bounce game zero being the variable. Oh, bounce game zero, we don't have that defined. We have that originally defined here, that's why. True, value is true. 
Okay, so there we go. Okay, here. So bounce game. This is not this flag that we're using here. It's a different flag that's set to true. So if one and true, well, that's always true. So this is always going to execute once we get here. And that will run the file. So that basically was our function that's going to open up a invisible window and execute the code. So, so simple thing, this system downloader, this script simply was very weakly, wimply, aesthetically obfuscated JavaScript. It was just simply strings broken up and very few complicated replacements to execute. Uh, it's a multi-step process downloading a malicious file uh, into a, a new exe file and creating a batch file to then run it. Uh, that's a really convoluted way of executing a, executing a malicious code would be to have it go through so many steps, but mm, this is what it was doing. So simple as that. Now it's been deleted, so the site's been cleaned up. That's unfortunate. It would be nice to see what we were getting still. Okay, even though that was a disappointment not seeing the file that we could download from that script, uh, I just got an email recently that uh, I just had to take a look at and see how its JavaScript looked. And it turns out that it has a very similar structure in that it's you can see the same three block of units here for writing a batch file, writing the letter M, and then writing the rest of it. It's pretty pathetic because so little of it has any creative obfuscation. It's all just simply difficult variable names and broken up strings again, and, you know, comments that I just deleted from the one thing. But the neat part is that. Since I believe the system will be very similar to it. Look at that. There's actually a file there. So I'm going to save this stream as a text file. Okay, so it looks like I was wrong about the magic byte part and how they might have just simply stripped off the M from it. That would be a really clever idea for someone to do, but in this case it was probably just an extra layer of obfuscation on the file to throw a little bit more crazy work into it. Loaded the file up here, wrote the first byte separately, and then did the rest of the byte differently, but it did what it did. Now. I don't really have to do this, but I'm going to change it to an exe file. And there we go. We see the results of that scan indicate pretty much consistently across the board that it's detected as malicious and it's detected typically as locky ransomware identified by most systems a version of it at least and you get a pretty good idea for which antivirus programs you don't want to be counting on for something like this so there we go locky sample of the virus downloaded proof of identity Soon.